Good morning, guys. Um, yesterday, I had the opportunity. I had a group of people come from uh, a place near Hilton Head, South Carolina, Sun City Bonsai Club, I think is the name. Um, and, a, and a group of them came, and they wanted to to learn about uh, how I develop um, azalea material. So, um, you know, one of the things I always try to teach my students is, or, or help my students understand is you, you've got to have an objective and a goal here. And so the goal of what I'm gonna be talking about today is to make small, um, uh, small size bonsai, okay? Um, uh, you know, in Japanese, I guess they, they call that shohin bonsai, but, um, uh, I'm just going to call it small size bonsai, all right? Small bonsai. And, um, but anyhow, here's the process. And typically the way I start um, <clears throat> is with three gallon landscape material um, that has been grown specifically for the landscape. And this is Satsuki. Um, the varieties I get the best results from are Chinzan, Wakabishu, uh, Pink Cascade, um, uh, Gumpo, um, some of the more common ones. Um, I, I'm, the people growing landscape um, azaleas around here, that's about the variety I have to choose from. So it might work on other varieties, I don't know. But once again, this is a, a vigorous, healthy, three gallon uh, nursery plant. Um, <clears throat> if I can get my hand in here, I'll get it out of this pot. But uh, when I go to the nursery, and you gotta realize nursery men are growing this, you know, you know, a nice, beautiful, healthy, vigorous plant. Thank you, nursery men, okay? But they don't care about what we care about in bone dive. So, but what I'm looking for is a great trunk, a nice, thick, heavy trunk, okay? Um, and a nice root spread. Well, oftentimes nurserymen will have this trunk, these, these trunks totally buried and covered up. Um, again, they're focused on this, you know? This is all gonna go in the ground. They don't care about the, the root base or the root spread, all right? But they often do a really nice job of growing that and developing that just by when they're developing this big, dome of foliage. So um, this is what I think of as subtraction bonsai. Somebody's already grown this for you. You go to the nursery and you buy this um, and you reduce it to make something smaller. And you know, a lot of people, some people have asked, how did you get interested in this? And you know, um, <clears throat> what really got me started was wanting to grow small azaleas uh, for rock plantings, accessories for rock plantings. That was my whole intent. So this was a one gallon gumpo last year and I cut it back um, and I've been continuing to cut it back. It'll probably get reduced by half this year um, so that I can end up with just a nice little small um, shrub that'll look nice next to a, uh, something bigger on a rock planting. So um, that's how it all started. I found out, I discovered, if I wanted to make little small azaleas, I could buy a one gallon azalea, I could cut it back and it would bud back and it would regrow and I could make a nice small compact tree. Well, that led me to trying some experiments on some bigger material. So I started looking for three gallon material and that's about as big as you usually see azaleas in the landscape nurseries I have around here. Sometimes they'll have seven gallons, but so um, the first step is to drastically prune all the branches. And remember what we're trying to do here. A couple of, a couple of points here. Um, okay, first thing. Before you go to make any cuts, put your concave pruners away. Even though they call them branch cutters, um, on azaleas anyhow, these guys do more crushing than cutting, and they will literally break a branch this size, uh, split it right down the side, and it will die if you cut it with a um, with concave pruner. So I have much better results not damaging the remaining branch by cutting with a fine tooth saw. 
okay? Some people might call them a keyhole saw, uh, but the finer the tooth, the better. You can see those two have um, pretty small teeth. The top one much finer than the bottom one, but they're both good, good saws. All right, so cut the branch, saw the branches, don't cut the branches, okay? Make a clean cut and use cut paste, okay? Now, why did I cut the branches like this? Well, first of all, I'm compacting. I don't imagine the tree's gonna be this size. I imagine the tree's gonna be bigger than this, but I'm just doing the first primary and secondary levels of branching here at the most. I may not even get that. I may only get, you know, primary branching. Um, oh, made the mistake of touching cut paste. Remember, you have to have a wet finger to get cut paste to release. It has to be wetter than the tree. Anyhow, um, here's my second thought. I'm gonna cut the branches short because I'm gonna grow them back out. These are gonna, I'm gonna get a bunch of buds out of each one of these. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so uh, the other thing, the other thing I think is really important is, is big cuts don't heal well on azaleas. So if I cut a big branch off and I cut it off to the, to the trunk, I'm gonna have a big scar there forever. And I want to avoid that. Um, I don't, I, I would prefer to have a cleaner trunk um, uh, than, than a trunk full of scars. So if you take and cut all those branches off and you end up with a nice long tapering trunk, that's okay, but now you've got scars all over it, okay? And you're gonna have to completely regrow primary branches, okay? Which means you gotta let them get long and get thick, okay? So it's better to leave the branch stubs, okay? Most of the time they work pretty well. This tree, I bet a lot of you are saying this tree's pretty ugly. I think I could cut this right here um, and remove this piece and I might have a better tree there. Um, I left it long because this is really thick and I got a smaller cut up here than I would have here. I'll, I'll think about that. That's just an aesthetic design decision that, you, that you, know, you get to make personally. So that's step number one. Um, remember, no concave cutters, use a saw. Step number two, let me just leave that there for a second, is to reduce the root ball. Okay, and when you reduce the root ball, uh, you can get it in a much smaller container size now. We've taken off all of the foliage. So uh, azaleas respond well right now to also re significantly reducing their roots. So, you know, with, if you consider how much soil is here, in here, this is probably an 80% reduction in roots. And with azalea roots, you notice they have these fine fibrous little roots you can't rake these out like you would a maple tree or something like that. All you do with these is you take and you cut it down to the size you want. So I'm looking for something about that deep. So I will cut that, all right? And then I'll literally shave it this way too, okay? To get it smaller. <clears throat> all right, um, so now we've got it in a container. <clears throat> give it some shade about three weeks to a month before you start to see little tiny buds pop out everywhere another three weeks to a month before those really turn into leaves and it's ready to move into filtered sun um, morning sun maybe uh, azaleas understory trees they never want full sun at least where i live in south carolina um, they always prefer a little shade. So that's step one. I just did that. I just got back from the nursery. Well, now let's step back seven months, or excuse me, more, that's more like nine months um, to last summer uh, when I went to the nursery again and I came home with some azaleas. And here are two of them that, that I brought home and I worked on. Um, this one is unpruned. I did these rather late last year. July is kind of late. These were done at the end of July. So I didn't really prune again. Um, but I did decide to prune some early in the spring, late winter, um, to just see how they would react. And I got 
a pretty nice reaction there. You can see all of the little buds that are coming out. So those will all turn into little branches. Okay, so now <clears throat> um, we're increasing the density. We're trying to create little branches. We've got our trunk, we've got our root base, so now we wanna make a bunch of little branches so when we go to really design our tree, we have choices uh, and we have somewhat developed branches already. Okay, so that's the density after eight or nine months. Here's one that was done last spring. So this one was done about a year ago and you can see how much denser um, the foliage is now. All I've been doing is hedging, okay? I just pruned to a canopy um, <clears throat> at this point. All I'm doing is making branches. I'm not making a bonsai, I'm making branches, okay? So that's uh, 10 months ago. That's just over a year ago. Um, all right, here's one that was done summer of 20. And again, I've just been, and look how dense this is. Look how thick this is. Okay, so lots and lots of branch choices there. We're not going to keep all of these branches by any means. Okay, we're going to eventually do what we call branch selection. And we're going to pick branches and we're going to wire them so they uh, appear to be more tree-like. So that was, um, this last one was 20, so that was almost, that was like 21 months ago, so that was almost two years ago. Um, it's getting close, it's about ready uh, to uh, take the next step. Here's one that's 32 months ago, approximately. I don't know, it might be 36 months ago, maybe it was done in the spring. But that puppy's ready, look at all those branches. Okay, lots and lots of density, lots and lots of branches. It's ready for the next step. That'll take a, that'll ta that's a three or four hour branch selection and wire job. I chose a smaller one yesterday that was done at the same time. And I went ahead and did branch selection and wiring. And I think you can see you know, it's still young, it's still new. This is the very first real bonsai training it's had. But now that these branches are exposed, they're bent down, you're gonna get back budding, you're gonna get buds back in there. Uh, I think you're gonna get some nice pads um, uh, in, in short time from this. So the other thing that I did was um, <clears throat> work on the ends of the branches. You know, we talked about no scars on the trunk. Isn't it nice to have a tree with no significant scars on the trunk? You know, no big branches cut off. And what I've been able to do now is minimize those branches and those transitions uh, from the primary to the secondary branches um, and way more attractive way less obvious, way less noticeable than a big scar on the trunk would be. You might end up with a perfect branch, but I'd rather see the scar here than the scar, you know, here. Um, I just think it makes sense. Anyhow, there you go, guys. Um, I hope that uh, <clears throat> kind of covers uh, some of the uh, steps to creating small sized uh, uh, bonsai and, and you know, azalea. Uh, this is certainly by no means bonsai yet. Um, maybe two or three more seasons, growing seasons, and it could be at a point where, where it would potentially be kind of show worthy. So um, it just takes a little time. But so that would be five to six years from this. So from this to show in five to six years is a pretty um, short and uh, fast transition um, in the world of bonsai. So that's what you can do with some of these azaleas. Now I am in South Carolina so I have a really nice growing season. Um, depending on where you're at uh, your satsukis may grow differently. So. 
Um, but if you think they grow well in your area, I would encourage you to give them a try. I think they're uh, um, worthy bonsai material.